Slingers, welcome back to the studio. Today is our first paint along. So grab your gear. You have the luxury of pausing. I do not. I'm going to paint this as quickly as possible, explaining as I go what we're trying to accomplish. And you can pause and rewind and do whatever you need to do. Of course, if you have any questions or any comments, just post them below. We're going to be painting just kind of a, uh, a harbor scene with the uh, sea oats from down around the low country. Uh, hopefully you'll see it as we go along. So without further ado, here we go. We're just using nice, loose, sweeping motions. We're not blending color. We're letting them just happen as they happen. We want these diagonal strokes. These give us a sense of the wind blowing, it being blustery. Of course, I could have primed my canvas better, but uh, such is life. So, got a lot of area to cover. Why not use a bigger brush? Well, because I want these brush strokes. I want these strokes in there at that size. And remember we talked about mixing your own colors. I'm going to dab into uh, a little bit of crimson along with the phthalo blue that I'm using to get kind of a purpley sky. Oh Lord, you may hear my chair squeaking as I work. That's, that's attractive. Let me get just a touch of that. There we go. I'm going to lighten it just a little bit. A little more blue and then we shoot that in as well not blending just letting those the impressionism is about your impression of a scene as you go so we're not worried about blending we're not worried about colors running into each other when uh, <clears throat> when Michel Monet was beginning his uh, his endeavors. He was quick to point out to his friend Renoir, who they had gone to uh, paint at the invitation of their friend Cezanne at his estate, and they were Renoir was remarking about all the wonderful things that were to paint there, and he the rocks, the trees, the this, that, and the other. Just look at it all, and uh, Monet replied to him. He said. I'm here to paint my impression of it, not yours. And that tells you more about what impressionism is than anything else. What do you see when you look at something? So again, we're moving along kind of quickly here. And it's not a difficult painting to do. Do not stress. You can do this. We're just using a nice, even back and forth. Look, I got some dirt on my brush from a previous painting that I was just working on a few minutes ago. Are we worried about it? No. Because, as the great Bob Ross used to say, we don't make mistakes, we just have happy little accidents. And so we're going to paint right over that and work it right into our painting. And of course, you do want to go lighter as you get toward the horizon, and this is indeed our horizon line. So I'm just going to put in some straight white, let it get dirty with those other colors. look at that we've got a blustery sky going on now uh, if you want to go to my if you go to my uh, YouTube page there's a under the about channel I believe you can go and you can see uh, a link to my Facebook store and there you'll see uh, a great many of my paintings <clears throat> if you wanted uh, to see this one is called shelter if you wanted to see it it's there give it a look you can see what the finished copy is like and if you wanted to uh, use that as a reference as you do the paint along here that's fine too I am giving you permission to paint this one I am not giving permission for anyone to paint any other of my paintings you know I'm liking that purple that dark so much I'm gonna bring it in up here just a little bit we want our sky to be just a little darker up at the top 
and I like that color so let's bring that color in maybe there's a streaky wispy white cloud blowing right through it and you notice all those imperfections in the canvas they just kind of go away as we work ideally when you set up between paintings you want fresh water you'll clean your brushes all that sort of thing um, I have been so pushed for time on a, on a large painting I'm working on that I did not do that it's not a big deal I can deal with it <clears throat> alright so now I'm just going to come in with some dark blue that I've just got sitting here and I'm going to shoot in just a horizon line and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Those of you that say, you know, I can't draw a straight line. A straight line is made out of many crooked lines. As long as it looks straight to you, it's straight. Okay. So we're going to put that there. And then I'm just going to kind of using, again, that same dark blue. I'm going to shoot in the general shape of the, the island that's across the, the little water we're looking at here. Oh no, water, don't worry. Water is easy, especially the water we're going to do. Uh, we'll lead you into something hard on our very first run at this. So let's just get this fellow shot in here. Again, we're not worried about anything. We're just relaxing. We're enjoying this process. There's a little bump of trees out there. I'm going to come right on top of this blue with some green. I have taken sap green and added just a little bit of gray and so we're going to come in with it and look we've got uh, I'll turn the saturation up on this uh, in the uh, photo editor so that we can see what we're doing but you're getting that nice little island in there this is actually a painting of uh, looking toward Hunting Island from the north you're looking south toward it and uh, if you've ever been to the low country of South Carolina you know how beautiful it is and I'm just kind of jabbing in what looks like may or may not be some treetops I'm not even worried about it right now Acrylic dries very fast, that's what I'm painting with. If you're painting with oil, of course, I'm assuming you, you know your way around your oils and that you know how to push your paint around to get the same effects. And what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for my uh, acrylic to dry. Not worried about it. Because as they dry, I'm going to come in and lay another layer on here to get the colors and the textures and the scale that I want. Okay, So in the meantime, we've got a body of water running in between there. So I'm going to take a little bit of that green I've got mixed up, and I'm going to hit it with a little bit of blue, and then a little bit of white, and we've got instant seawater. We're not worried about running into that horizon because we're using the same colors. Notice I haven't changed brushes, all one brush doing this whole procedure. Now we're out to sea over here. Well, let's see, we'll make this just a little bit wider than the original painting, because why not? Running some of those yellows and grays run together with the previous painting. The uh, canvas board that I'm painting on, I did just so it. I didn't sand it very well, as I should have. Uh, but it's it's doing okay for us. Let's get a little bit of that darker gray green in there. Sap green with some gray in it. Sap green gray with a little bit of white in it. That, that other green you see happening there. See how we've got some seawater happening now? Now all we're gonna do I'm not even going to clean the brush. I'm just going to wipe it. I'm going to dab directly into my white. Now I've got a nice sharp edge on my chisel brush. This is my half inch chisel. I'm going to dip into the white 
straight in there with a little paint. You're not scared of it. Just like so, we're going to come over here to where the waves are rolling in, and we're just tapping in some waves. That's it. That's that's all there is to it. White, white, white. Get back to that clean edge again. Get some more of that white. And we're just running them in. They're just waves running through the water. Little dab, little stroke. We're not worried about anything. That's about as hard as that needs to be. Put one little more, just screaming for it, right there. There we go. That's it. That's it for our water. I mean, we can, we can put a little bit over here if you want to. Uh, the more you sparkle up water with straight lines, it means the calmer the water is. And I want a little bit of, of agitation in the water. All right, so now we're going to move down here to the foreground. For my foreground, again, I'm not cleaning the brush, wiping it off. Sometimes I use my rag, but I really want to purge, but all my colors are in one of those color schemes we talked about before, so we're going to be fine using that. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come into some plain old uh, brown, and I'm just going to start slapping it down. Back and forth, nice smooth strokes. We're not worried about blending. We're not worried about going over edges. I'm going to pull it across the water there. It doesn't really matter. By the way, my paint's a little sticky. Acrylics will do that to you. Um, when you are dealing with dry heat in your home, as I am, Let's get that horizon line as straight as we can get it. We're just following that line we put up there. So, you know, along about there. Now, I'm going to have a path, and I'll go ahead and lay it in. Again, this is just some off-white. And I'm just going back and forth, laying in a little bit of a path. I know I want that classic S curve to happen. So there's my S curve. And it goes on out and it makes its own little beach out there, but don't worry about it. Because all this over here, nobody's ever going to see it but you. I finish out my brown over here. Again, doesn't matter if we don't cover it all. There are several ways to put, you, you can put the paint on the canvas any way you want to. There's a, uh, there's a technique, hold the brush like so, it's loaded thus, and you can just scrum your color in there, and then just go back and forth and whisk it on. And we are not going to sweat those details. I don't enjoy doing that with acrylic as much as I do with oil, just because of how fast the paint's going to dry. We want to overshoot, overlap that little trail we made. We'll go back and do what's called restating. Remember what we learned in textures and the paint. I need some more of that brown. I don't really have a whole lot of time to mix more up. Let's see what I've got here. All right. Look, I happen to have more. comes out of the tube, that, that would be a great thing. We are in good shape. Paint slingers, I have no idea how much time has elapsed because I am not clocking this thing. We're going to go till we're done, but I am trying to work quickly so that we get in the habit of turning out videos that you can watch in a short period of time from beginning to end, but then go back and Look at them at your leisure. All right, so there we go. We got some more of that brown oxide working. Get that little white edge off of there. Go away. Go, get. All right, and then we're just going to continue it over here on this. Oops, I have paint on the brush. We're going to continue it over here on this side. Now, you could do this color in a dark blue. Matter of fact, I'm going to put some in here just to show you 
blue doesn't hurt a thing because the foreground on top of this, we're going to be painting yellow ochre uh, sea oats. And what is, uh, what is the complement of blue? Remember? Complement of blue is orange. Yellow ochre is almost orange, so the blue is not going to hurt us. It'll give it a nice little shadow under there. I may put some blue on the other side just to, just to get, I'm trying, well, <laughs> let me not make it too complicated. How about that? Notice I'm almost running completely over my little path here. Not a big deal. We're going to put it right back in. Sometimes painting is about giving and taking. It's like sculpture or like sculpting in ceramics, rather. You take and you give, take and you give, take and you give. All right, so let's put our, our little path back in. I don't care if I'm picking up that blue because that sand, that hot, hot sand that you're walking on, it's reflecting blues, it's reflecting yellows, it's reflecting everything around it. Okay, so we're just gonna get that in there. Nice and rough for now. Not worried about a thing. You can do this. You haven't seen me do anything hard yet. Okay. All right, let's clean that brush off. Got to get a little more of my seawater up here. So let's do that. And I'm not worried about if I hit this line or not. Matter of fact, here, let's just blur that line out so, so we're not worried about it back home. All right. It is almost magic time. What I'd like to do is, uh, before we get too much further along, I'm going to go ahead and get the colors I want on this island back here. The sky is now dry, so I can put in those jungle trees. Paris Island, excuse me, Paris Island is too, but Hunting Island in South Carolina <coughs> is quite literally a jungle. Back in the, uh, I don't know, 40s, 50s, uh, the Tarzan movies were filmed there. Part of uh, Forrest Gump was filmed there, to be the jungles of Vietnam. So we kind of want, you know, to be able to capture that, that, oh, look, there's a jungle over there kind of uh, vibe going on. That blue underneath gives us a little bit of a, of a darkness to our jungle. And again, it keeps it, <clears throat> it makes it look a little out of focus as you're looking at it uh, up close. Now, why don't we give him a little shoreline, just just a wispy little line. All I did was, sh you know, sharpen that edge of the half-inch chisel brush that I'm using, and it runs right into those breakers, and it comes back, and it's okay because those waves are breaking up on this little beach also. All right, it is time to well, a little more brown here, please. I don't like all that white showing through. A little bit too light for me. So I'm going to get this a little darker. Pick up a little bit of that blue, a little bit of that red. Get that in there. All right. Going to switch brushes. Put this one in my water to rest. I am going to use now the cheapest brush known to man. This is a chip brush. This thing will cost you a whole 50 cent at any paint store. The reason we're getting it is look at the bristles on it. They're very wide. They're very loose. They're not compacted. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dab into a little bit of my brown very lightly, just the tips, and not on my canvas, but on a dabbing surface. And then I'm just going to start bringing up blades of grass. Now you say brown over brown, why do that? Because I'm going to come right behind it and do the same thing with my yellow ochre. And now look, we have sea oats happening. Because that brown is still wet underneath, it's just flowing right up in there. And you know ideally you want to start 
from the front and work your way toward the back. Uh, so let's just do as we're supposed to. Look at that. There they are. Let's say our wind's coming from our left to right, so we're going to have them lean over that way a little bit. You can go straight up and down with them. Let's don't overcomplicate it. A little bit of that brown showing through is okay. You don't want perfect little rows, but having some rows because you can see through sea oats. Any of you have ever been down to the marshes, Everglades, or in, in uh, South Carolina, it's just the low country. We're going to come right out here into our path. We're bringing up the grass. Look at how this is happening for us, folks. That red and that blue is over there giving, giving us a nice dark shadow. The, uh, oh, that's beautiful. I go back and forth just a little bit to break up any anything that looks like it's too routine. Oh, but the magic hasn't ended yet. We are, we are still rolling strong paint slingers. There we go. All right. Looking good. Let's continue on to the other side. Same thing. We're going to start up near the beach. All right. Bending those over just a little bit. It's just push and flick. Bending those over just a little bit. That was, oh, yeah, there we go. And not all of them will blow together, so we'll be standing straight up so we can do some of those straight ups. And over again. Coming out to the edge right here where we made this edge. And look how that blue is popping through there for us, just like we knew it would. Still with me, guys? I know you are. You're handling it. You're like pros. You're already a practicing Monet. By the way, if you were looking for, if you were looking for some Da Vinci or Michelangelo stuff, I am so sorry to disappoint you. I'm well, not really, but I'm gonna put a little brown in here. Just to, just to fix that up a little bit. All right. Now, we are getting into the home stretch. What I'm going to do now is wipe the brush. Just wiping it. Always keep an old towel or an old rag around. I'm going right back into the off-white that I used to make the path and that I made that shoreline with. The same uh, application, the same dabbing on uh, that I did for the grass is now on my brush. And look at here. Sea oats. Look at them happening right in front of your eyes. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. If you were any better, there had to be two of you. Coming over here, we're giving our oats the little tops. If you didn't know what I was talking about before when I said sea oats, now you know. We're just poking right on top of our, of our, uh, a little dab and a little push. Dab, push, dab, push, dab, push. And of course, things will get bigger as they get closer. Remember, we talked about perspective. Let's just cloud that up a little bit more. All right. Now, I need a little bit more. I want some contrast. You'll remember all those things we talked about. By the way, guys, don't concentrate on this. Just do. It'll happen. I promise you. All right. There we go. Now. Now we're getting that out there. Now. You don't want to be in a place in your mind where you're thinking about every little thing as you're working. 
you know, as you're practicing, that's when you think. Uh, it's like a, a band member. We'll grab some of that white. Just a, just a pop a little bit. Um, when you're in a band, and I have been, in rehearsal is when you do all that stuff. When you think and you, and you plot and you compose and whatever. When you get on stage, that time is over. It's time to show up and show out. And so I'm going to put a little bit of this right out here on the edge. Just give us a little look. There's a beach out there. Okay. Um, when you get on a stage, it's time to show out. And when you're painting in your studio, your mind goes away and you just paint. All right. I'm going to use our third brush. I need to give him some rest. Get in the water. I'm going to grab a small chisel tip just as soon as I can find one. There we go. Again, guys, just working on another painting. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very dark color. I'm going to use my blue and red, which of course is going to make purple, but it's very, very dark. And then I'm going to grab some of that dark green that I've got going so that I know I'm going to get a brown tone. And we're going to shoot us in an old deadwood tree here. We're going to start right about here. And we're just going to bring him up. We're not sweating any kind of details right now. He's leaning over this way. I'm going to get a little water involved here just to thin my paint a little bit. A little bit more of that green. Get over here, green. And we're going to connect him up. And we're going to use short little choppy strokes. Chop, chop, chop. And then maybe there's one that just shoots off that way. As you know, if you've ever been to the beach or even seen pictures, things grow funny when there's a lot of wind and a lot of water working. And so we see all these, all these really bizarre but really neat things growing. We're letting this happen very organically. It's very natural. Just throwing him on out there. We'll put him on out there a little bit. All right. And then just to finish him off, the simplest thing in the world, that off-white that we had, that is on top of our sea oats, that was our path. We're going to go into that, pick up some on our chisel brush, and we're just going to dab our lightest coming from the right. So we're just going to dab some of that on there. And we're relaxing. We're having a good time. Wherever the light would hit it, that's where it hits it. Look at there. You can do this, you can do it, you can do it. Let's get a little bit of sun so coming across the top of this one. We're not worried about anything. Our little tree is going to be just fine. There's light hitting there, there's light hitting there, and then again from the top. Nice little bowl on that branch. I'm just going to pull that one out with just a dirty brush. You ever seen old driftwood the way it looks? Doesn't look like it <clears throat> It got dressed up for anybody, does it? And, and that's what we got going on here. It didn't get dressed for anybody. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that dark color, bring them on down just a little bit more, give them some roots. Not roots, uh, some stability. Remember when we talked about balance? <clears throat> this is all about that balance, and that's what you're seeing here. It's an informal balance. I'm going to just darken in some of the colors, dabbing in some of that dark tree color right into our sea oats. All right, and then just some touch-up, a little maintenance stuff. There's going to be shadows on this side of the path from the grass. And notice, please, I am not working hard at this. I'm just shooting that in there wherever I feel like it needs to go. I didn't mix up a special color. This is the same color that the trees had. 
and there you go. <clears throat> now, there's a lot more you can do. You can uh, apply as much detail and light as you want to. But what we're after when we do an impressionistic painting is capturing the, the atmosphere, the light, the motion. Uh, if realism is a lingering stare, impressionism is a quick glance at a moment in time that is occurring then and there and will never happen again. I'm going to uh, see if I can pull the camera around here so you can get a better view of it. And there it is. There's your painting. All right, guys, so that's our first paint along. Um, rewind as many times as you need to, and you will get it done. And again, you can go into my contact information below. Click like. Click subscribe, ring that little bell thingy that tells you when there's a new video. Leave me a comment down here in YouTube and say, hey, I enjoyed this or hey, you suck. But that'd be great too. But again, the link for my Facebook page is in there and you can see the finished uh, original shelter uh, for yourself. In the meanwhile, keep slinging that paint and relax. You can do it.